Hello, everybody. Welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. We are on episode 15 of our Halls of Ardenvul Mega Dungeon playthrough. Uh, the, the, the Halls, Halls of Ardenvul are by Richard Barton, and we are using the Old School Essentials System by Gavin Norman. Uh, all right. Uh, I am your referee for the night. My name is John, and going around the horn, we have the usual crew, starting with... Hi, I'm Mike. And for at least a little while longer, I'm playing Gorind Blackhood, the third level dwarf. <laughs> we'll see how that goes by the end of the night. <laughs> I'm David. I'm playing Onweir, uh, Deathcaller, <laughs> the, the illusionist. Uh, oh, uh, my name is Matt. I play Avaricios. And uh, guys, don't worry. I have a plan. <laughs> in fact, I have a bunch of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, those podcast listeners, those these are bananas. Bananas, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be uh, Onward's uh, last illusion. Is a big <laughs> pile of bananas. <laughs> right <in the> other <laughs> end of the not a bad idea. You just <laughs> shut, shut up. up. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know if it'll work, but don't anyway. feed the chaos machine, Ted. You know better. <laughs> and last, and lastly, we have. And right, lastly, I'm Ted. I play Squeegee Knee Biter. Soon to be, you know, squeegee the six feet under, I think. So, <laughs> so as you can see, they're all, uh, they're all an ice. We're spirits. super optimistic. <laughs> That's what we are. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, I, for those who haven't joined us last time, a little bit of catch up. Uh, they are, they're in a bad place. It's a, it's a pretty mm -hmm. dire situation. This is the, I believe this is the first session we played in all of our, uh, both Dolmenwood and Ardenville, where we, we broke mid combat. Um, we are in the midst of the round, so uh, set the scene real quick. It is the seventh Lagarios. So it is approximately four thirty p.m. Um, the uh, we have two henchmen with us. We now have one henchman with us. Uh, Mort is still with Squeegee. Onweir's uh, redoubtable um, henchman Yanwen was ripped limb from limb, literally, by a four-armed giant, ten-foot-tall baboon named Cisco. Um, <laughs> It has to be named, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, that just happened mere seconds ago uh, at the end of a certain hallway. And let's go over to Owlbear to check out where they are. They are, get the pointer here, uh, they have just entered this doorway right here. The initial fight took place right here in this corridor here. So that was after a long chase that started way down here and led all the way back up here. So, um, uh, Yanwa just got ripped to shreds. You guys have retreated back down the hallway, slammed into that door on the right after detecting from the doors on the left that even the baboons were warning themselves away from those particular rooms. They were, uh, they were spiked from the outside, both of those doors in the west, and had feces uh, over them, uh, kind of uh, over the over the fronts of the door sort of uh, warning people away from them and um uh coming from down south is the other forearm baboon named tresco now tresco uh their only reason that they're probably still alive at this moment is because onweir cast a spell the name of the last last week's episode he cast phantasmal force um uh, projecting an illusion of a continued hallway so that tresco didn't uh think to turn up the hallway continued past then balked at the uh, chamber that led to the oracle room, which was right here. It seems that all the baboons don't uh, very reluctantly approach this room um, and will not enter, if at all, as far as you know. But the moment that Onwir moves, the illusion is dispelled. Onwir has moved, so the illusion is dispelled. So Tresco is going to head back and he's immediately going to see. Um, uh, the original corridor is going to head up that way. So we have Cisco coming from the north. We have Tresco coming from the south. Um, in addition, we have you heard the hooting of baboons also coming from the north. So there are additional reinforcements of regular baboons about to turn that corner from the north coming in. In addition, you also don't know where that human leader is. You left him all the way back in his chambers. You know that he has called for the aid of a man named Isocritus. You briefly saw him when you first ran... Um, when you first ran down the initial corridor to get back to this place. Right. Um, he was a man that was dressed in uh, the highest of our Kantian fashion in robes, a slight man, uh, but you don't know what happened to him. All right, so we pick up 
where you guys are now in that room. And let's now, see. This is the room with the um, elevator, right? That takes us <laughs> up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chance. Wouldn't it be awesome if Can I was start like, press, you're oh my pressing God. a button? If, if there's another first. pyramid with like a plunger teleporter, oh, yeah. the joy. What I if all do. this planning you did was just like, yeah, there's a stairway up to the top? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it's not that, that would way. That'd be great. So it goes no, no, it's not that way. All <laughs> no. right. Well, you know. <laughs> no, no um, it's as bad as you thought. <laughs> so uh, just to be clear, um, Avaricios, you have one spell left. That spell is Cure Light Wounds. Onwir has no spells left. However, he does have one chunk of Arcanum left that Avaricios has taken, has given to him. Um, uh, I should note too that the chunk that you used on Weir, it lost all of its amber luster the moment that you cast a spell, and it's basically like an inert chunk of rock in your hand now. Although it does look unique, it might still be valuable to the right person, but nowhere it, it cannot be used for any of the functions that I outlined for our kind of before. You have one more left. Um, uh, right, okay. Now, the room that you come into the entrance. Shall we? Mm -hmm. You slam the you slam the door before be, behind you. Um, you are breathing heavily. <laughs> yeah, I believe Goran is a little bit hurt, right? As well from a. I am. From I'm at uh, eleven or sixteen hit points. Okay, got a little swipe action from Cisco. Um, his head is also ringing for the fact that he has lost his helmet and he's lost his shield. Um, you slam the door shut. You see before you are in a ten foot section of hallway that immediately opens up into a forty foot north to south by twenty foot west to east rectangular room you are entering in directly from the uh the western the southwestern side so okay 40 by 20 you said 40 by 20 that's correct yeah so something along these lines oops oops good enough yes okay. indeed that would be it Okay, so okay. Um, this used to be an opulent chamber of some sort. Uh, you're using your black light torch, by the way, so you actually probably wouldn't be able to see the far end of that room. But that's okay. Um, most of the walls still retain some of their plaster and imagery. Uh, most of it's faded, though, so you can't really make it out. What is very clear, though, um, the one image that stands out, uh, that even in your state of distress you kind of take in, is that on the northern wall, on the far northern wall, there is an image of an immense squatting baboon which stares directly at you from the north wall. You Now, you've seen lots of baboon imagery, um, not only on this level, but everywhere, right? Because you know it's like a uh, a symbol of Thoth, right? Uh, the abyss and the baboon are frequently seen together. Um, but you've never, they've always been sort of in that um, profile Egyptian hieroglyphic glyphic mode, right? This is also in that style as well. However, the baboon is directly face front and looking directly at you. It's quite life-size. Um uh i should say it's it's like man size like it's larger than normal bad it's like but it's like taking up the entire northern wall and looking at you you said it was a fresco yeah um there are several piles of rotted wood uh it looks like they probably were at one time a bed a dresser and a desk at one point um and there is a human-sized skeleton which oh. is right in the center of the room on the ground mouth like a jar like jaw broken and, ga and gaping open on the ground arms like splayed out uh on the ground before it um you see that there is um what appears to be shining uh amongst the trash you see uh, you see what um looks to be just out of reach of the of the skeleton is a long sword of some sort um and you do see the pages of what appears to be a book uh that is uh uh flapping out of one of the desk drawers which is open okay you take all of that in the door has shut okay uh you immediately hear it crash right like it's just you know and it's just ah! um uh, all right you hear an answering low uh growl coming from the south as well we were in the midst of combat so uh does on we want to cast a spell, I guess is the only question. To ask. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to you know, probably nah. a good guy. Nah, I think I saved a slot. I'm a little worried I'll need it later. Okay. Before before you cast a spell, do yeah. we in fact have any spikes? Does anybody have any spikes left? Can we spike? Yes. But they are in your pack. 
they're in my pack, which means that like retrieving them, we're not going to have time for that. They're going to be through that door before we get a chance. Yeah, we got like a fraction. It seems probable. Um, okay. So on where? So you have to just. All I'm asking is for a declaration of spells. That's what you do before yeah. the round starts. You can yeah. worry about your plan. Phantasmal force. Phantasmal force. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So you're going to be casting phantasmal force. All right, everyone, yeah. please roll for initiative. Uh, let me get the. Who's rolling? John, I also need to cast a spell this turn. Do you really? Yeah. What is it? Dwarf. Clean, summon clean underwear. Indeed. Oh, he rolled a oh, six. It. I'm do it. You want to use that spell now, Gorn? <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh. I rolled a six for initiative. Oh, hey. all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. We have to roll again. You what? You rolled a six as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Double Son sixes. Of. Come on, Ted. Come on, Ted. Come on, Ted. You can't, you can't beat John, dude. John is always going to outroll you. It's totally... Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> no, this can't be real. This, yeah. this, is, this, is, this is not fair. I was calling uh, shenanigans. This happened last last. I'm session. telling you. We're cursed. Think, uh, on, on three ties, just Fuck. win and ah. get to leave, right? I win. Five versus ten. Fafangu, huh? Fafangu. Okay. I tried. Uh, so uh, what do you got? You guys have to declare to me what your plan of action is. My plan uh, is to cast Phantasmal Force. Okay. Uh, and in the uh, tradition of the Grand Wizard Wily Coyote, uh, upon this uh, wall, directly across from the door, mm -hmm. I want to paint. Mm. Huh? Go ahead. Please. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Here, here's my pitch. Yes, yes. Here's my pitch. We rush yeah. in. I'll, I'll mark the map for viewers. We hug this wall, not unlike yep. how we did it in the hallway before, so that we're yep. not in the line of sight of whoever's crashing the door. Right. I want them to just keep rushing forward, so I would like to make this just sort of continue forward. So I'm tempted to make either this be a hall in which none of this exists, and the hall continues as far as they see, right? Or just make a hall starting here. In either case, I want it to sort of appear as though there are silhouettes in the distance, as if we are further down the hall in need of chasing. Does that make sense? We're not right there. It's sort of like shadowy shapes that look like us that they are catching up to. That's my, like, kind of like Wiley e. Coyote painting the, the tunnel gotcha, on the outside. Yeah. It wouldn't go Dude, I'm, I'm down for that. I just want to say one thing. Sure. These guys have seen you do your illusions now. Of course. They probably know this room better than we do. That's what I'm worried about. Absolutely possible. They open that door up and see a weird hallway. They're not going to buy it. They open so up they, that hallway. Like if you do an, if you hide us like you did down uh, in room fifteen, by the boss, hide us against that wall. Maybe the short wall the at the door. very end. Yeah, yeah. Just, think, they'll think we're around the corner. They come running in, and then we book it out behind them. Say that again, just so I'm clear. Okay. Well, you want fake, you, you want you want us wall, to be. Fake wall in front of us, right? Yes, yes. Maybe exactly where you were picturing the the tunnel, right? Fake wall in front of us. And then they're going to come in. They're probably going to hook up to that area to the north looking for us in the room. And then we run out past them and just try and make it to the uh, Oracle room before they catch us. Okay. Yeah. Or, I, I or, think that's... Or, or the, like on either side of the door. I think we could all squish up there. That way we're close to the door so we can... Well, bear in mind that uh, Cisco, or, or uh, not Cisco, who was to the north? Um, Cisco. Tred, so what's Cisco? Yep. Was shoulder to shoulder with the wall, which is why we couldn't pass him in the 10 foot corridor. So the, the likelihood that he bumps into us. Wait, so you guys are, hold on, you guys are, you're not thinking, because I won initiative. You got that, right? Yeah. So, so you know what's about to happen, right? They're about to come in and just kill us. Yeah. You're not oh, going to, you, <laughs> you're not going to, you can't true. get, yeah. They're coming in right now. You're, that spell isn't going to work anyway. That's true. Yeah. Well, this is optimism. So. <laughs> yeah. That, see, uh, I thought... John, I would like to. I would like to surrender. <laughs> that's what I'm planning on. Changing I'm serious. Place. I'm serious. Like, I, I, if I have to declare my action, I am going to drop my weapon in front of me, put my hands up behind my head like this, and be like, "Take us yeah. to your leader. Stop." Now you can. We if, surrender if you can manage to get through a round of them coming in. Um, it, it's still, you know, then the bottom of the round would occur and the spell could go off, but, you know, 
I mean, surrenders. So they're gonna watch us cast it, dude. So here's here's what I'm gonna propose, and I can't believe I'm saying this. All of you go around uh, the corner where you cannot be seen from the door, uh -huh. and I will. I'm little. I'm small. No, I'm not a threat to any ten foot baboon. I will be right by the door doing what Goran just proposed, and maybe I can delay him long enough for you guys to get the spell off. And I can sweet talk my way into saying that that goddamn wizard teleported everybody out of here and left me behind because he hates me because I'm a goblin. He's a racist. <laughs> I mean, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's if you literally survive the first round. Okay. Goblin begging for his life on his knees is the. I've been thinking about this for a week, and I mean, Matt's <laughs> idea of the bananas is great, but <laughs> they're going to be even madder when they turn out to be illusionary bananas. So, I, I someone's going to have to sacrifice himself. It's the only way out of this, and I'm yeah. Squeegee's willing to do it. Okay. For more. <laughs> I feel like I should be the one sacrificing myself, but I like your idea. One, I don't want to like the go too long about this. Yep. I, there's a possibility that I can still cast a spell to allow you to escape once we've slipped by. Possibility, not probability, right? You have more spells, man. You slipping by is contingent on using your phantasmal force. No, it's not. The, if you're begging... No, because they, if they're, you come around the corner, where are those bastards? And you're still there, they're not going to believe my story. Well, they're going to see that because they're that's what see John us, was saying. John already not... stated that they're turning the corner and my spell has not fired because they, have, they won initiative. And my point is, if I can delay them... 10 feet before they turn that corner long enough by pleading like a poor little goblin. That you guys... Turn. You're, you're literally you're standing, here. standing here, I see. Yes. You're delaying them right at the juncture point. That's that's all I got. Spending around, and then I can fire off an illusion. Okay. I'm going to think about what that illusion is, and hopefully I can come okay. up with something let's, that will save your ass, too. Let's play but let's, let's see the first round happen. <laughs> All right, so uh, the, three of you, the three of you whip around the corner. Squeegee, you're going to stand right where you are. I assume that you drop your weapons. Yeah, yeah. I drop my weapons, and I'm going to... I don't really have time for this, but if I can get the gold rod out of my backpack, I'll offer it up above my head. You don't have any time for that, unfortunately. But yeah, however, okay. you, can't, you can just drop your weapons, so... Uh, of course, but they're, they're going first. This is more just letting me know like what your plans yep. were. So, all yep. right. So this is what happens. Um, Cisco um, uh, initially felt like the resistance of the door, right? And then now he on because he won initiative, he just bodily moves into it, and it's not even locked. So he just you know he just throws open the door. It goes crashing against the wall. You see coming like basically like over his shoulders, underneath his legs are like a bunch of like um, larger than normal baboons, right? Like the the, the typical oh. the typical albino baboons. Right, so oh, typical ones. Uh, you're, you're, yeah, yeah, but under the mill. But you know what I mean. Like the, when I say Albano bab baboons, they are not like regular little baboons. They're like r decent sized baboons. Um, right. And uh, so they, he comes barreling in, um, and he looks like he's about to just run right through you, Squeegee. But then he comes comes up short, and he like raises one of his um, massive paws just to mm -hmm. swipe you away. Um, and we're going to, uh, now he expects to see you, but he expected to see everyone there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, um, you make a reaction roll squeegee. Okay. Um, you can add your charisma bonus if you have one, uh, but they are already hostile. So I'm going to give you a minus one on top of whatever bonus or penalty you may have. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So I need you to roll okay. 2d6, subtract one and then right. add your so charisma bonus. Okay. Um, my charisma bonus for reactions is plus one. So you want 2d6, right? Uh, yeah, give me one moment, though, so I can find the uh, chart here. I found the chart. Okay, here we go. So okay. monster reaction. We'll go ahead. 2d6 minus one plus any charisma bonus you happen to have. And I have a plus one charisma bonus. So right. straight 2d6. Well, that's been nice knowing you guys. I rolled a five, <laughs> and that is... So that is definitely in the hostile end of the monster reaction chart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, they don't like it. So you're like, oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Um, and he is going to rush right into you. And he's going to attack. Oh. Uh, okay. Dodge. Dodge, my little friend. Dodge. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, wait, is he, um, by any chance, does he count as a larger enemy? Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he, he's very... Good. I get a plus two size bonus to my armor class. Oh, snap. All right. I, I am going to... 
I'm going to do a little of the dodgy dodge. Okay. What's your AC, bro? Well, against this guy, it'll be a 17. I also had a 17 when I got hit three, <laughs> I also three had times. A 17. And, Wait a minute, just let him have this moment. <laughs> All right. Change your name to Goran Hope Crusher, man. Thanks a lot. Um, does well, that... I won't have time to do oh, that. Too. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Squeegee, do you have a um, shield? Because uh, you don't if you did. Because you, yes. you, you dropped everything. Yeah, I have a shield. So you're actually at a 15. But I get a plus two size bonus to larger enemies. Right. I'm just saying, like, because you dropped everything, you no longer have a shield. I dropped my weapons. I did not say oh, I everything. Oh, come on, John. Give no. it to him, dude. <laughs> Play your audio back. You said you, have, you dropped your weapons. Yeah, said, okay. yeah, That's fine. All right, 17. Here I we go. Think, I think, to John's point, a oh, shield counts as a weapon. Well, it's just oh. like, you know, you're trying not to look threatening, right? Or, like, you're just surrendering. Hands up, right? Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's a fair point. He dropped his shield. Uh, okay. Okay, so... Honestly, after what, what happened to Gorin, it probably doesn't mean... Alright, so what is your actual AC, Ted? No, it absolutely matters. Um, okay, so it's 15 with the shield, it's 13 without, but I get a plus two size bonus to AC against a larger enemy. So, so it's 15. Like, larger than man-sized, I think, is the implication there. Gotcha. And so it's a 15. Gotcha, okay. Hit. Hit. All right. Hit. Before you spend too much time rolling dice, I only have seven hit points. So. <laughs> Mit. No, hit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I do have a helmet on. So if you've got any crits. The bite, uh, the bite uh, uh, did not hit. Oh, see? Bright, bright side oh, to everything. Right? <laughs> but, but the red did. <laughs> oh my god! I, I might be rended. All right, and then you're also going to take. Um, what was it? A, uh, let's see. Yep. It ain't pretty. All right, Ted, you're going to take twenty five points of damage. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so that is going to put you squarely in the unconscious category. Um, I need you to roll me a D6 and then a D12 separately. All right. Oh, God. D6 is a 5. D12 is a 10. A 10. Now I get good rolls. Okay, so you took 26 points of damage. Is that correct? I thought you said 25. 25. Okay, so 25. Um, you had 7 hit points. Which means that you are in the negatives at negative 18. 18. Negative, 18. negative 18. You rolled 10 on the severity, which means you have a 28 severity on the head. Oh. Uh, this is not a vital organ. 18 minus 15. Okay, you have you're you are messed up. <laughs> all right. So he comes oh. at you with all four force, does not care at all. He's in a complete rage. Um uh, after probably in a bloodlust after Yanyama got ripped apart and he comes at you and he basically uh, picks you up and just tears at you slamming you against the wall um, and rending you uh, b basically beating you about the head with multiple arms um, you are first of all you are concussed for 18 days you have four fatal wounds <laughs> Okay. And you are skull cracked. Um, let's see. Oh, I remember skull cracked. I think. Uh... Yeah, that's a good one. But we're going to have to wait until see if you actually survive this. All right. So here's the deal, everyone. Pay attention for, for Squeegee's sake. You have three rounds to get rid of all of the fatal wounds. All of them. Um, or you die. Uh, you can attempt to remove a fatal wound at the end of each round by rolling a one on a d6. That's that's you specifically, Ted. Okay, so you have a seventeen percent yep. chance to do it on your own. An adjacent ally can attempt to remove a fatal wound by spending a standard action, just you know your action, uh, doctoring you, and then rolling under half their intelligence score. So you take your intelligence score, have it. You have to roll that or under on a d twenty. Um, magical healing does not restore. This is for Everest, you state this is a sake magical healing does not restore hit points while you have fatal wounds. Instead, every two points of magical healing removes one fatal wound. 
Understand, Avaricios? Ah, uh, yes. And he has four, He right? has four, correct. Yeah, he needs uh, three rounds before he is terminated. Uh, okay, so I, I can't fix that. We'd have, we'd have to get rid of at least one, and then I'd have to roll max for healing. Right? Uh, yeah. Take a dude on his own. Onweir and Gorin could also attempt to remove one as well. But it is, uh, it's pretty... It's looking pretty grim. So Squeegee is basically squashed against the wall, slumps down. Um, the rest of the ba uh, the baboons kind of tear in uh, from um, underneath Cisco's arms and legs, um, and uh, they wheel around the corner. And there you are. Um, so the the uh, let's see what their movement was. One twenty. Uh, what's one twenty in encounter rate? It's a lot. Is it 40? Uh, 40. Yeah, okay. Um, so they are going to uh, slam into you guys. There are. Let's see here. We got... Hey, guys. Really well. I tried, guys. You did. You tried. I, pre I appreciate it. That was a very good idea. All right. Give me a second just to check out how many of these guys there are. Ah, squeegee. I love we squeegee. We knew you. Okay. All right. Six of them right race around the corner and uh and see you guys immediately. Um they even though the black light torch doesn't, you know, they, they have vision, right? They can see and hear you and smell you and everything like that. So they see you no problem. Um and they move in to attack. There are six of them. There are three of you. There's going to be two against each of you. Mort's there as well. Oh, Mort, you're right. Okay. Good old Mort. Um my uh, my backup character <laughs> <laughs> for now <laughs> okay um, more. All, right, there's more. Four. all right well then I guess that'll be random then as they kind of pile in um, unless you guys were protecting anyone in particular was anyone standing out front and being brave or foolish sure. I will Gorand I will okay so yeah, I, I, Gorand I, you're... Should be, I should be towards the front too even my I feel own. like as the person who got us in all of this, maybe I should be at the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now now we're all brave. After hey, you know what okay. I mean. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll roll randomly then. Okay, um, first one is uh, going for. Uh, what am I rolling with D four? Okay, first one's going to be going for Mort. Jeez, Mort. Okay. Like, shove Mort. Shove Mort up there. Why, second, why are we offering ourselves? <laughs> second one is Onweir. Third one is uh, Mort again. Uh oh. Uh, is the best of us. We must say. Fourth that. one is um Avaricios. Use your shield. Fifth one is Avaricios. And sixth one is Gorned. Here we go. As they come hey, tearing out the gallery, hooting and hollering for your blood. And here we go. All right. Good times. Um <laughs> so these guys let's see I haven't had these guys attack yet um, blah, blah, blah. should two or more baboons attack one individual each baboon receives a plus one to hit and plus one to damage that will be Mort and Avaricios well, that's cool good um, for them good for them good job baboons okay so I'm glad they've been practicing here we go we have uh ba -ba. As they come running around the corner, they're all like, parkour, parkour. <laughs> <laughs> parkour, parkour. <laughs> all right. Yep. That, that's going to be a plus. That, okay, got it. I can, I'm can. i visualizing them as they come pounding around the corner. They're like jumping on each other and climbing over each other. Absolutely. It's, like, for your butt. More, more, it's very alien. Yeah. B, yeah. man. More, what's, your, what's your AC? Mort's AC is 18 because oh, yeah. of Lorica Segmentata. Yeah, nice. Okay, 18. Here we go. And a shield. Miss. Yay. Miss. Yay. Miss. Okay, Super I'm just gonna yay. I'm gonna do his second the second uh, ape that was on him as well. They're all get both of these guys are getting a plus one against him. They all they they get all three attacks? Mm -hmm. They get two attacks. Each or three? Three. three. Bite? three. Oh. Claw claw bite. Uh, oh, they get three. Oh. I've what, got what, two what, what's, what's, what's the AC what's the AC more? Eighteen. Eighteen? Uh one yeah. hit. Well, that's in the mort. Maybe it was a claw, um, and that claw is going to do three points of damage to Mort. 
Mort is 75% dead. All right. Good job. Mort's still up. <laughs> okay. That's it from Mort. Uh, on weird. We got one on you. AC? Uh, God. I don't even know. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Happy to be wearing a helmet on weird? No, I'm not wearing anything. <laughs> <laughs> this, guy, this guy totally just. I'm a surfer pessimist. What? AC nine, you said? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got that seven yeah, cons that's... really doing me good. Yeah, that's really cool. Three that's hits. a dexterity thing, though, right, David? You're not Three hits. miscalculating your AC. Mm, my dex is nine. Oh, okay, good. There you go. Uh, that's we... what you're looking for. Wait, actually, that wouldn't be a 9 to be a 10, right? Because 9 right. isn't a negative 1. doesn't matter. On where you took 9 points of damage, you were, you were hit by all three of the attacks as it just barrels into you, leaping on top of your chest, wow. throwing you down to the ground and tearing at you. Are you out? Luckily, I have 14 hit points, John. Did you know that? About my level <laughs> I didn't one know that. <laughs> uh, how, how far uh, are you? Yeah, I, I, two, I have 2 HP. That's, that's two? good. 2? All right, you're at negative 7. Roll me a D6 and a D12. Let's do it. D6 coming down the hatch. That is a six. Okay. D12 coming down. That is a, a seven. Seven. Seven with a seven severity is a 14, and you're hitting the head. You are going to be concussed for seven days. Um, wait a second. Let me get uh, that was concussed. That was uh, squeege. Okay. Then we have Onweir. That is concussed for, what did I say, seven days concussed? Yeah. And you're going to take uh, one fatal wound, and you are also skull cracked. We'll figure out the skull crack later if you survive. And in the meantime, you have three rounds to get rid of that single fatal wound. You are also unconscious. It also takes one body away from being able to help Squeegee. Uh, okay, on where's out. We got three left. Uh, let's Next up, we have uh, Avaricios has got two monkeys on him. Here they come. What's your AC, right, Avaricios? <laughs> What's your AC? Oh, my AC um, is 18. I've got my shield up, and I have the uh, uh, the uh, archaic armor. Do you have uh, a helmet? I do have a helmet. Okay, here we go. Let me just make sure. 18, they're getting plus oh, one. Oh, yeah. They're getting an additional plus one against you. Here we go. Yes. Yes. That is a just hit. Do you want to oh. take it away? Nope. Uh, yeah, I will uh, sacrifice the shield. Sacrifice shield. Wait, wait, dude. Is that a claw, John? Uh, that was the second roll, right? Yeah, it's a claw. But the first claw missed. First claw missed, yeah. Dude, wait until two claws hit you and then use your shield for that one because then they don't get the rend. They don't get rend no matter. That's only the big giant. That's, right? a, that's the Oh, thing. okay. All right. Never mind. All right. Yeah. All right never mind. Shield Avaricios? I'll shield. Okay. Shield is gone as you they break that shield out of your arms. The bite misses for the first one. All right, so you got uh, no hits there. Second, second monkey. Miss. So my AC is now a sixteen because my shield is gone. Uh, thank you. Yeah, auto miss. Auto hit. You want to use your helmet? Oh yes, I do very okay. much. Please. So similar to his his much bigger cousin Cisco, he comes screaming at you, looking to rip your face off, like nope style. And uh, <laughs> and yeah, instead he grabs the helmet and rips it off of your head. Um, so you are unscathed, but you have no more protection except for just the armor on you. Uh, I have my faith. My faith will protect me. This I'm is true. Well, you have survived the round unscathed. Well done. Okay. And lastly. Hey, he's wearing those Thoth robes. Is that stopping them at all? No. But good, good point. Goran, last one. Uh, my AC has dropped due to the loss of my shield, so I'm at a 15. 15, okay. First one was a miss. Hit with the second claw. Miss with ah, the mouth. Good. Going the way of Squeegee, I see. Taking four hit points of damage, Goran. Where are you at? I'm at seven hit points. Okay. That was all of them. <laughs> Who do we got? We got Goran... <laughs> Uh, Gord, Mort, Mort Avaricios. and Avaricios. Gord and Avaricios. Uh, well, only Avaricios is actually looking tip top. Okay. Things are looking dire. Um, it is the bottom of the round. What do you do? <laughs> huh. I assume running out of the room is not an option. Uh, what, what happens? Like, so, yeah, so the, the space is full. What, what well, so the baboons are in the main. Uh, you and the baboons are in the main part of the room. So you're out of that uh. corridor part of it. 
Okay. Uh-huh. Right. Cisco is completely taking up the ten foot portion. He's standing over Squeegee's limp form. So Cisco is your barrier right now from leaving the room. Right if the if that is the only en- exit out of the room, you're basically standing on top and uh, meleeing with these baboons on top of that skeletal corpse. And there is a depiction of a baboon facing you and looking at you on the northern wall. Boy, it would be cool if there was another way out of here. Yeah. So you cannot. There's no way to check for like secret doors in the middle of combat or anything like that. Not unless you're not engaged, really. And even then, it might be tough. It depends on the circumstances. So right now, you cannot declare that you're withdrawing because you have to declare that the top of the round. This is the bottom of the round. You are in melee. Yep. Oh. So, oh okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Now you can. Uh, I would rule that you could break away if you wanted to, but but they would get like bonuses, uh, uh, bonuses to attack you next round, no matter what you did. Ah. Oh. All right. Um, cool. despite the failure of it working for for. Um, poor little squeegee. Mort has no. In- he's uh, he's surrenders. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to kill more than one baboon, and then he'll die. So maybe he'll live if he surrenders. Okay. All right. So you give yourself up, hoping that the baboons are intelligent enough to realize what that means. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mort drops his weapons, puts up his hands, gets down on his knees. What do the rest of you guys do? Yeah. Well, there's one thing I can think of. It's one thing that I have left. I don't think running is an option because we can't get past all these guys anyway. They'd be able to catch us. Uh, plus, they'd take swipes as we as we left. Um, I'm going to try this, and this may be, be stupid. Um, I'm going to take the little uh, onk that I made, the little symbol of mm-hmm. all that we've seen around. Yep. And um, uh, I'm going to uh, kind of hold this up. It's just a little thing made of woven graph, grass. I'm going to uh, just hold it up in, uh, in front of me and spell uh, uh, out, in, uh, in the name of Thoth, we uh, seek peace and to parley. Okay, cool. I like it. Dvorin? Uh, my charisma is not going to help anybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I will, I will, I don't have a shield anymore. I will drop my uh, axe in front of me and I'll, you know, yelling at the big ape, not the little guys, and be like, we surrender, take us to your leader. And and then we're all going to die, and it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. All right, so... No, we're likely this, we're going right? to be tortured, but... We have, su- we have faith, my friend. We have faith. Full surrender? Okay, cool. Uh, so, assuming you are not double-crossing, do any of you guys want to uh, retreat or make a fighting withdrawal at the top of the round or roll initiative? Or, in other words, are you going to double-cross by doing that? Uh, I don't no. know. Okay. No, I just don't think we can get out. Okay. I just don't think we can get out. You guys are I'm, I'm, giving up the fight. Let's uh, let's roll for initiative just to see where we're at with that. If they don't flat out kill us, guys, there's still an op- opportunity to bring to save at least one of you. I think. I got if they let us perform medical stuff, Matt, okay. why don't you roll, bud? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I got this. I got this. I have. I have. Uh, I have faith. Oh, that's a two. Okay, my faith might be misplaced. <laughs> Man, okay. These initiative rolls for like three sessions have just been awful. It's pretty brutal. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is what happens. Um, uh, Cisco. All right. Uh, I'm just thinking logically how this guy would act. So apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Cisco is going... <laughs> Uh, basically is going to uh, kick the body of Squeegee up against the wall and mash him thoroughly so that he knows that he is actually dead. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. So uh, Squeegee is is now dead. The, oh. uh, he storms oh. in and he bellows at his fellow baboons um, and like, like in a shrieking tone and they're like, yip, 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 and they all sort of like fade back sort of behind him. Okay. Um, and 
he basically is going to uh, use all four of his arms. All right, and he basically <laughs> he's going. No, it's not that bad. He's going to cuff all of you. <laughs> like at the same time, just like pass, like that, just knock all of you guys so you all go sprawling down in the ground. Um, and then he bellows something again to his baboons in whatever language that they speak, right? Um, and uh, they come in and they basically like sit on top of you, pull your hands behind your back, that sort of thing. And um, they don't have any restraints or anything like that, but their muscles are like you know monkey strong, right? Like it's like you're not you're not getting out of that shit, right? Um, uh, that now. Feel free to interrupt if you've got any sort of plan that you want to do, but they are they are basically grabbing you bodily and holding your hands behind you and, and yanking you up uh, off the ground and they're going to march you away. Um, they uh, they grab on Weir's body as well. They do not squash him. Um, he whispers. Uh, he actually gets down to one of the baboons and he whispers something. Oh, I should. By the way. The very next round, Tresco comes rushing in as well, obviously, right? So Tresco, um, this is actually who the conversation, he, Tresco kind of comes up short. Now, you, this is what you guys notice, uh, first of all, as you're kind of being yanked up, is you see that Tresco um, ignores Cisco's uh, uh, talking to him, basically, like furiously kind of screaming at him. And Tresco kind of brushes him aside and kind of comes up to you guys, kind of huffs, and he gets down like way low, way low. Now, remember, he's like the one that you got a good look at way back down south. An older one, lots more scars in Cisco, a lot more careful, right? And he's sort of like looking at you, like, like <laughs> big fangs, you know, just kind of like looking at you. Cisco, meanwhile, jabbering at him, um, and uh, he makes some sort of like off putting gesture with like one of his off arms, you know what I mean? Sort of like, you know, um, and he kind of gets up again and he points with one of his big arms right at Onweir and he says, oh, Isocritus. To the master. And Cisco says, you should stomp him. And uh he's and Tresco kind of gets right up in Cisco's face and he's like, You stomp him, I stomp you. And Cisco's like, uh, you can see that Cisco is not used to having his authority challenged in any sort of way, and he's like, he gets like right up in Tresco's face, like super pissed, and then he huffs away. Yanks his uh, arm over his shoulder with a with a pointed thumb to get the out the other baboons to march everyone away, um, and then uh, alone in the room as you guys leave, Tresco sniffs on where this right kind of pokes at your at your body right and then just pulls you bodily up by the robes and slings you over his shoulder and follows back out of the room. Okay, yeah, Gorn. Uh, as we're being marched away, I let my cloak pins drop. Because <laughs> not idly do the leaves of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I, got, I, I, I can buy that. I can buy that. Uh, uh, can I? I would like to call out to uh, Esco. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say, um, if you let me, I can keep him uh, from dying. He has information I think you want. I can save him. Uh, let's roll a reaction roll for, uh, for Tresco. Um, I'm getting tortured so bad. You could do it. <laughs> oh man, be alive. So wild. Be alive. Uh, Tresco is <laughs> Tresco's a bit smarter than Cisco, although Cisco seems to have the dominant authority, at least amongst the baboons. But Tresco is a thinker, right? Not as not as raging as as Cisco is. Um, uh, Tresco uh, kind of looks you up and down, completely untrustworthy. Um, and, uh, and then you can go ahead and roll 2d6 and add your, just, I'm going to make it a flat 2d6, but with your charisma modifier, if you have one. I, I would uh, like to point out that the most telling comment in our discord this week was John saying, well, cure light wounds is actually really useful in torture situations. <laughs> 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 All right. I am going to roll my 2d6 now. I'm going to add, uh, a one for my, uh, uh my charisma. Mr. Good looking. Uh, oh, there's a five plus a four. That's a nine plus one. That's a ten. Uh, okay. I think he kind of looks. He looks at you suspiciously. Um, he is going to. Uh, so he puts you down on the ground. One big, massive upper arm is on your shoulder, right? And another smaller arm is um, basically right. Like almost gently, but it makes it even worse. Like right at the base of your neck, 
and you know that if he just so much as twitches a finger joint, it's snapped. Right? As he kind so of... So this is n not like a massage. No, not at all. <laughs> no. no. Uh, and he says, you fix. Of course, this is, this is what I do. I can totally fix him. And, and he I'm goes, fool. He goes, wait. And he, with a third arm, right? So both still two arms are on you, right? The third arm, he rips a piece of cloth off of your tunic or or a surcoat or something like that, right? And he- Oh, my, my silk robes. Yeah. And, and smart ape. He goes over to Onward's form and he stuffs it in his mouth. Uh -huh. Okay. He says, now you fix. All right. Uh, I will fix. I cast Cure Light Wounds on him. Okay. Was it a D6 plus one? Or straight D6? Is, I can't remember anymore. Six, D6 plus D6 one. D6 plus one. <laughs> Two. It's one, so uh, uh, one plus one. That heals a fatal wound, though. So what is it? Two, how many pay points total? Two. Uh, just two total. I rolled a one. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, but that should get his uh, fatal wound That's away. one fatal wound, yeah. So he's actually on death, so he's going to die real quick. Unless he so. only had one fatal wound. Oh, well, oh, Amor, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was squeegee. Yeah, it my was, bad, my bad. Squeegee oh, you had four. four. You're right. My bad. Had four. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I was like, oh, shit. I think Amor is actually dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so am I still concussed and skull cracked, or is my skull? Yeah, you're, yeah. So you were not. You're not conscious on weird. Okay. Yeah. You just don't. You're not. You're not. You're not dead. So, um, you're not. Don't have a fatal wound. So you are still concussed for seven days. I've got that written down. You no longer have a fatal, fatal wound. Let's um, roll on the scroll crack table. Um, roll me a save versus death, please. Oh. <laughs> hit it. Or oh, no, I just told this guy you were okay. No, you're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. But it's just a save you have to make. So make a save versus um save versus death and hit it got or it higher. Two. You fail it. <laughs> Roll a d6, please. Uh, this is the number of intelligence points you just lost. A oh. six. <laughs> a six? <laughs> All right. Uh, Freaking vegetable now. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Oh, you're, no. you're, not really. You you go into a coma. You're in a coma. Um, Roll me another d6. Just because Mort's the retainer, he's not wiping your butt while you're That's dying. That's two. Two? Okay. So, uh, you can make another con check after two days. All right. Um, and again, after... Roll me another d6. The one. One. Okay. So, after two days, you can make a con check. And again, after one week... If you fail the first check, and if you fail both, the coma is permanent, and then you really are a vegetable. Got it. <laughs> yes, I love. I right. love it. So you're out That's for a great. you're out for a minimum of two days. Okay. Um. But the, just... I, we'll say the Tresco sort of sees your breathing a little bit easier. That sort of thing. He says, mm, "Not awake." And he, he kind of he, he leaves the ragged on his mouth. Okay. And he picks them up again. But they, but they won't die. If... He went. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, Evaristios. Uh, okay, um, so I just need to go tuck in my kid. I'll come back and I okay, my fate and just... cool. All Can right, we take a quick break, actually, guys. I think I think oh, take a breather. Got to take this yeah, all in. I have some emotional things I got to work through. Sure. Uh, <laughs> okay, you we'll... should be used to this by now, Ted. Come on, <laughs> thanks. thanks. We'll be we'll be right <laughs> back. Okay, we are back. They have taken time to kind of internalize what's just happened. <laughs> Inter internal bleeding would be more accurate. Uh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so th things have gotten from shitty to really fucking shitty. But um, we you survive with only one PC dying. We are we are without Squeegee. F and chat for Squeegee the Goblin. Uh, uh -huh. But another goblin, a better statted more heavily armored goblin has risen to take his place, Mort. But, Mort. But Mort is um, wounded, I believe, and is super uh, wounded. Much love, <laughs> much lower level than than good old Squeegee. As they get marched out of here. All right, so you are physically battered and uh, and um, uh, kicked down the hallways to a chamber. Now, what I'm going to say is, is that. Part of the given okay. movement rate, the the slow movement rate of dungeon crawling, assumes that someone is mapping, right? I haven't been too strict on the fact that like you actually in world have like diegetic like 
uh, parchment and stuff like that. But I just is like part of that movement rate is, is is like you're going very slow and carefully and mapping so that you can have something to refer to when you need to move around. You don't have that anymore. Okay. So, but you do, you are marched through certain corridors. I'm going to give you a general description of like, you can obviously tell like the direction you're going, that sort of thing and common landmarks and things like that. However, um, should you escape um, or should you be taken somewhere else? Uh, just be aware that you do not have that frame of reference. So you have to use your own player knowledge to navigate. Um, okay. So basically where you head off to is they are going to march you. If you guys are, are you guys looking at an owlbear? Yeah. Okay, see my pointer? Uh -huh. Okay. So they're going to march you around this way. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm sorry. They don't. They don't like the well of light. They don't like to go through there if they can, if they can help it. Uh, so what they would do. Oh yeah. So that's pretty easy. So what they're going to do is they're going to march you down this way and they're going to go up this corridor here and back into the hall of judgment. Oh, what a great title. <laughs> that sounds uh, oh, yeah. like a very, very pleasant place. Now they, sure, for sure. um, uh, the human leader guy, the, the gray, gray armored person is not there. All right. Um, the, what they do do is um, they're going to march you to this door on the east side here. Okay. This is where you saw the person that was being tortured, being led to the first time. Okay. After they were done torturing him. Okay. They, um, uh, so now one thing that you do notice as you're stumbling through here is that there is a row of columns of pillars right here, right? That have, uh, that have sconces in them with lit torches. Okay. Um, they go down that corridor and then there is the, uh, like the torture pole right here, right? And then there's like the ruby throne right here, right? Those are both empty. Um, um, but they circle strangely wide around this area right here. Like they don't go direct into the door. They kind of go like this. North and around. You take note of that. Um, and then they, they go into this corridor here. Okay, now, you enter into this small, narrow area, 10 foot wide corridor. Uh, kind of goes eastwards and then kind of jumps up 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 toward the north with multiple doors on the western side and one on the eastern side near the top of this northern corridor. Okay. Um, and you can immediately tell that these are all um, cell blocks. Okay. Uh, they You hear whimpering and groaning from within these chambers. They are solid wooden doors and they have a small little um, iron grill plate, right? like at eye level that you can look through, right? Out of a southern door, however, one that is not grilled, a man steps forward um, and uh, he is obviously Wiscan. Give me a second here. Wiscan is the, um, uh, this is what Varger was back in the day. Um, this is sort of like a Scandinavian analog. Um, he is a, a a large, hairy like a, a hirsute a hirsute man, right? He's wearing a uh, a dangling chain hauberk, um, which is uh, cinched around the middle with a wide belt. Um, he uh, has a wooden shield strapped to his back, and he is um, uh, carrying a long hafted battle axe, uh, not not a fantasy double bladed one, but like you know an actual battle axe, like um, with a wicked beard uh, on it, uh, and. Uh, you can also see that he has a shining orange and gold amulet, which he wears proudly on his uh, on his chest around his neck, like in an amulet form. Um, but it it's basically like just like a, uh, a what do you call it? Like a smooth orb. Um, I don't know if you guys know Clyde Caldwell, but he uh, the artist, but he was notorious for the amount of smooth orbs that were in his paintings. Well, he's it's a Caldwell like orb on his on his chest, um, and. Uh, hairy like with long um he's got uh blonde dirty blonde hair that's like in, in braids that he's like like braids all the way back and like braided a beard as well right like badass um and he kind of comes up and he's like Meh. so what do we have here and uh <laughs> kind of pokes at you guys and uh, it's like looks like we got one dead spellcaster and uh hmm, shorty yeah all right Got a little gobbo over there, and uh, oh, oh uh, that's someone from the Empire. Well, looks like uh, you guys have been sniffing around where you weren't supposed to, were you? 
Um, you see, and you see Cisco, like uh, Cisco and Tresco are back there, just like <laughs> they kind of laugh a little bit as they're hunched, like way low in the corridor behind you. Um, uh, he says, uh, "Well, you're under my care now." He goes, "Name's Nyal Oakhart. Real pleasure to meet you. We're gonna get real nice and chummy." Why does he sound like the dude from Deliverance? This is not okay. <laughs> do, we, do we hear banjo music? He goes, first things first. Uh, I answer to only one man. That man's name is Garalad. Uh, he should be around shortly. Uh, I've got his complete faith, and I'm allowed to uh, order these big guys around whenever I feel like it when it comes to the prisoners around here. So, first order of business. Cisco, if you wouldn't mind divesting these fine gentlemen... Of all of their worldly goods. And within like seconds, like they, unless you guys try to stop them, like they just basically tear everything off of you. Now, yes, I'm looking at you, Matt. That's right. I'm looking at you <laughs> as they attempt to <laughs> yank <laughs> oh, no. that torch out of your hand and they cannot do it. Oh my God. <laughs> they look very displeased. They start to wing you against the wall, trying to get oh. the thing out of your hand. You're going to take one point of damage from being winged against the wall. Oh, ow. Okay. Uh, all right. This is, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, a magical curse. I cannot do anything about it. Uh, ow. I mean, obviously I would. You can have it if you wish, but uh, I he cannot. Goes, yeah. Neal comes up to you. He, he, he backhands you like across. Uh -huh. and he goes, You'll speak when spoken to. Now, what I'm going to do here is he kind of walks over to on Weir's body and he goes, well, he's not going to be needing this any time, but my friend, you definitely are. And he stuffs that rag into your mouth and he goes, Tresco, oh. hold him down. Oh, <laughs> this might happen. Oh. <laughs> I was now, for the day. Um, <laughs> oh, no. And he goes, he, <laughs> you really should have spoken for that removed curse, bro. He's, he says, Cisco, oh, he goes, Cisco, we, uh, you find anything interesting over there? And he goes, he goes mm, y'all, look, your scos. And, uh, man, and you see y'all's eyebrows are like, oh, well, 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 what do we have here? And he pulls up that carving knife that you pulled out of that, uh, that the way down south in the one that room. Yeah, you found mm -hmm. the chef, the chef's tokes, right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He kind of taps and he's like, this didn't belong to you. This belongs to Earsco. Where is Earsco, by the way? Mm, I haven't seen him. Uh, no matter, we'll get it back to him in just a second. And they hold your arm down. He goes, now no squealing. Here we go. I might squeal a little bit. And oh, he just no. goes, goes up with a carving knife and just goes, what? Oh. And you're, <clears throat> uh, you're, uh, hand comes clean off with a torch oh, oh. so happy days matt you don't have that curse on you anymore <laughs> oh. now i just need a feather and a hand and i'm good oh. uh yeah so uh he goes oh boy well it looks like we may have done some damage there it looks like he's bleeding like a stuck pig ah uh, that's no 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 stop your squirming there friar frotter <laughs> um he goes um yeah, I probably should have thought about it a little. Well, okay. Um, he kind of peeks out the door and he's like, "Oh, uh, oh, boss, boss." Uh, uh, yeah. And in walks the gray armored figure. Okay, this the, the guy that we tried to get her, get her uh, Ray. Yes, I think <laughs> okay. that started this whole thing. Garrelad, Garrelad walks in, uh, cool as a cucumber, right, with his gray arm. He's got that crazy beechwood staff with like the spoke blade on it, right? Um, and uh, he's looking very, very smug. Um, and he's like, well, looks like your little journey in my realm has come to a decided end. Ah, well, it'd be very pleasurable talking to you in the Hall of Judgment to decide exactly how you were able to find your way here. Uh, in the meantime, and he goes, <laughs> he goes over to Avaricios and he, uh, uh, he pulls out of like a pouch, like a number of like herbal, earthy sort of ingredients, right? Mumbles a some sort of cant over top of them and places them on your your gouting stump oh. of an arm. All right. And it basically uh, immediately magically clots. All right. And um, you are going to heal four points of damage. 
Well, how the, many uh, did I? How many did I take for having my hand lopped off? I had one for getting slammed to the ground. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, how many points did you have left before uh, you? I was I was at full before that happened. I was at I was at eight when um uh, uh when they just like, okay. Passed. So it wouldn't have done enough to actually knock you unconscious. Okay. Um, so let's uh actually that's a good point though. Let me roll. Um, I'll roll. Let's see. Let's roll a d8. Well, getting a hand cut off would be. What, how many points did you have before you got? Uh, before my hand was cut off, I had eight. You had eight. Okay, so let's say that it did seven, like it dropped you right down to one. Okay. And then you were then you were healed four. Okay. Hey, uh, John. Yeah. When they cut off the hand holding the torch, does the hand let go of the torch? Uh, no, it does not. Really? Oh wait, no. I, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking right. Um, yes, it does. Yeah. So the hand, yeah, flops out, and the torch is down the ground. Okay. Um, and hopefully, uh, some knucklehead will pick it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Garrett actually looking at the hand, he's like, "Now, be careful. Something is wrong with that." And I shall have Isocritus take a look. But none of you be foolish enough to take it. Return the knife back to Irsko. Uh, Nyang. Put these men into their cells, please. Keep them separated. They're going to have to double up with the existing prisoners. Yes, Gorand. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Well, my uh, my lord, uh, I don't want to keep you in suspense on how we got here. You have a big magical teleporting pyramid right down the hallway there, and I hit a I hit a switch in another part of the dungeon, and we just appeared. We'll have time. No mystery to it. Well, time for that later. I can see that you are already bargaining for your life. I'd really like to just I have, keep on bargaining. You'll find that I've uh, discovered that dwarves at their core are all cowards in the end. Sure. I'm glad that you have proven my point. No problem. Into the cells. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, no, all right, you heard the man, let's go. All right, mm. so you are all dumped into, including Onweir, into a number of cells. Um, all right. He says, uh, so Garelad is going to basically tell y'all, he's like, we're going to let them, let them stew for a bit to soften them up. And then the interrogation will begin after a few days. We'll have to see if this uh, master of the arcane arts manages to rouse himself. Uh, you know, I myself am going to be heading to my tunnels to look for more vulnerable areas. Uh, let me know if they give you any sort of trouble. Uh, Cisco, Tresco, thank you so much for handling this so well. Um, and you see, like, as he, as Garalad disappears, Nyal looks like, he just looks like he's like, what a guy, that guy, Garalad. <laughs> he's just, just like, <laughs> he turns around, well, you heard the man. In we go. And he shows you into these cells. Okay, so um, you find yourself in uh, separate cells. Each of you guys are in a separate cell. In, in any separate cell. First of all, Gorand, you are in a cell, and you find yourself with, um, they are all small, like 10 foot by 10 foot rooms, right? Um, and you are with a, another dwarf. This dwarf is, uh, looks really really rough right he looks like he's been beaten to smithereens his face is basically just a mash of features um and uh he has a black patchy beard that looks like it's been eaten away by mange um and he looks completely insane as the door slams shut he sort of turns around and he sings like this old dwarven song to you like an old mining song that you kind of remember um from the uh from the mountains that you came from um but it doesn't have anything to do with like your situation just kind of um, and he kind of looks at you with like a little bit of kind of peers at you. And, um, and if you let him, he sort of like pries your lips apart, you know what I mean? To kind of look into your mouth and then it kind of closes them again. And he's like, Whoa! and, um, and he looks and he says, Guelph, Guelph, the name's Guelph. Gorand. 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 What Gorand. clan are you, I Guelph? In the clan. I have no clan. I'm clanless. I'm clanless. Oh, Body me too. Bodiless. You are a clan as well. Have you yeah. spoken to Garlad? Garlad has stripped you of your clan as well. Yes. Ha. No. I still haven't told him. I haven't told him how I got down here. He'll never find out from me. I, do I care that the other ones are tortured? I don't care if the other ones are tortured. Why would I care? I don't care. I'll never speak. I'll never tell. I don't owe them anything. 
Yes, come sit in the corner with me. Yes. I go sit in the corner with him, see if he'll tell me. <laughs> yes. He kind of pets you as like a, like a nice little thing. He's like completely insane, <laughs> but completely crazy. Uh, yeah. On Weir, you are thrown into a um, into a cell with a hulking, massive man, uh, young, but he's uh, he is completely bald. Um, he's got a little bit of uh, stubble that is starting to form out. But without a lack of shaving tools, it looks like he hasn't been here that long because he's still relatively clean shaven, right? So five o'clock shadow uh, on his face, stubble um, uh, on his head. He is uh, basically almost naked completely, uh, as was Guelph. Um, but he has a, like a, like a, what do you call it? Like a, a shawl of tattoos, like just like a, like all across his chest, right? Like all like Celtic runic sort of stuff, right? Um, and he's just all muscle, just fuck huge. Um, and uh, this will be your temporary character while on where recuperates for the mean, for the, for gotcha. the meantime. Okay. This man's name All is right. uh, Yost with a J, J O S T. Okay. Uh, for your information, uh, which if a conscious person was put into this room with him, you would have discovered soon enough that he is a member of Dalton's Darlings. Which is what the Knights of the Azure Shield was the group that they were looking for. Mm. All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> you go turn yourself in, get the reward. Now, uh, <laughs> Yost, you know. Okay, so this is this is sort of sort of how you came in, how how you arrived down here. Okay, um, the Dalton's Darlings does exist. They are a real band. They are led by a guy named Dalton, and you were. Um, you were actually in, you had gone down the pyramid and you had talked to the halflings, you were dealing with them, that sort of thing. You actually, the Dalton's Darling actually ended up exploring Northeast, which you guys never have, haven't done yet. Okay. You guys have mostly been like West and South um, from mm -hmm. the main area. So exploring Northeast and you went across what was uh, known as the Great Chasm away from the halflings and you found a spiral stair that led up to this level. Oh. All right. Okay. Um, there, uh, there at the, at the top of the stairs, you were actually attacked by guardian statues of Thoth that animated, but you have happened to have on you a holy symbol of Thoth and you presented it forward and the, the guardian statues, um, uh, although they still attacked your compatriots who had to retreat, you were actually able to separate you, you got separated, but you were actually able to get through the statues using that holy symbol. Um, and you found, uh, a passageway that led to a secret access to the great hall, uh, the great, the, uh, uh, to the great, to the hall of judgment, I should say from the North. Okay. It was at that point where you stepped into the middle of an interrogation we're immediately seen oh, fuck. <laughs> and we're captured. Okay. Um, uh, now you no were s smart enough to stick that holy symbol in a place where no one dares look. Oh, of course. You know how much I wish I'd swallowed that amber as, <laughs> <laughs> as <hot wear? laughs> So the you must um, have a pretty good prison pocket. So yeah. the uh, but you have since uh, actually taken that holy symbol and you have placed it uh, behind a loose stone. In your cell that stone is okay. not a shawshank redemption sort of thing right it's just there's like a, a loose stone and you place it there so you have um you are the sole person with any sort of um uh, possession okay the holy symbol of thought love it okay uh mort you are thrown in with um with a uh a half elf a female half elf um and her name is Tresti, T R E S T I. Okay, and she has uh, almond eyes, a very uh, a, but a strong human chin, like a square jaw. But she has the almond eyes of an elf, um, and she has her um, sort of sandy brown hair in a tight braided bun on top of her head, which, uh, because of her imprisonment, is now like like escaping in all different directions, like wisps all over the place. Um, she doesn't look like she's been um, too badly interrogated she looks like she's holding up well at least okay um and she looks sort of bemusedly at at you as mort gets thrown into the cell um avaricios you are thrown into a cell with a another woman this is a human woman um she is uh stocky muscular 
She has uh, short red hair, like a, like tight around her head, short red hair, and she has a um, a prominent aquiline nose, which gives away her Archontean heritage like immediately, right? Um, and uh, they've all like the women both just have like like scrap like sh scrap shifts on, right? And the men are basically bare chested with like loincloths. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, and she looks, uh, like she's been like really badly beaten. Like she's like in a bad way. She's like huddled in the corner, doesn't even notice you as, as you kind of come in. Um, she sort of like huddles away from like the, the, the light that kind of shines in momentarily. Um, and that's the only reason that you notice that there's a form in there with you, plus the smell. Um, uh, and her name is, um, Samantha the Red. Red hair. Okay, all of your weapons are, uh, all of your gear is basically taken from you by the baboons and by Nyal. And taken, um, you see that they are dumped, uh, no, they are, they are taken into Nyal's chambers to the south. Okay. Uh, Ted, I can actually give you the um, dimensions if you want to draw the prisoner quarter, since you do get a really good look at that. Okay. Should you wish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just okay. adjust my screen a little bit here. So, da, 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 da. so the quarter goes thirty feet. Thirty. This is a ten foot wide quarter. They go thirty thirty feet directly to the east from the door. Okay. And then it oh. it turns a corner. Wait, wait. Just erased something. Okay. Right. It goes thirty feet. Yep. Yep, and then right at the thirty foot mark, it actually uh, hitches to the to the north. So you want to like this? Yep, exactly. Yep, and it goes up. Um, uh, it goes up from there thirty feet. So it's like a forty foot north to south. All right, hold on. Okay, we're just gonna move that here. Okay. Yep. And and does it turn again? Or? No, it ends right there. Okay. Okay. So there are um, cells uh, basically lining each of the squares on the western side. So there's three. Yep, you okay. got it. And then there's one cell on the top of the um, on the eastern side. Yeah. And in addition, okay. there is a door to Nyal's chambers which is on the southern wall, 20 feet in from the west. So right in the, right in the middle of the southern wall. Right in the middle. Yeah. Like so. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. On the, on the southern wall. Oh. Yep. Yep. You got it right there. Okay. So. The... Uh, wait. Here? Okay. Like Are we able to determine, like, when we get put into our cells, am I able to figure out which cell um, everyone else got put into? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll allow that. Yeah, so here's the deal. Um, in... Okay, so in the first cell... Uh, okay, Wait, so... I well, just numbered them, John. Can okay. you use the numbers? Sure, 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 sure. Okay, so in cell one. Uh, cell one, we have Guelph and Gorin, the dwarves. That's... Dwarf Party Central right there. Yeah. Uh, cell T is my cell C um, is going to be Trusty and Mort. Okay. In cell 3 is going to be Samantha the Red and Avaricios. Is that the uh, the best cell, John? I hope it really know. is. It really is. It's, okay, no it's noticeable. And cell E up at the top, that would be cell four. Um, is going to be uh, Yost and Onweir. Right. Okay. Oh, great. The guy who's in a coma is right across from me. Perfect. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Is there any kind of holes? Can I search the cell, the wall between mine and cell two? And see if there's like any cracks or anything that you could actually communicate through? Sure. Yep. Um, you don't find anything with the cursory search. 
I got all kinds of time, John. You do. Yeah. I'm going to search it uh, as thoroughly as possible. I would say like for these, yeah, since you're not pressed by time necessarily, that anything that could be found um, will be found. Um, you do not find anything. It appears yeah. to be very, very solid. Um, you also did notice too that uh, around y'all's uh, hooked to his wide belt that cinched his hauberk, a key ring. Uh, did you say this was lit by torch? Uh, uh, no, it's pretty much it, well. The hallway is lit by a torch, but it's pretty much darkness within here. Okay, and it's you know you, the... you you have like a pile of, of dirty straw, smells like urine and body odor and poop, um, fairly awful, mm, uh, right. vermin. You know the whole works. Right. It's 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 bad, bad news. Um, the doors are like oak and bound in steel, or are they they're not like jail doors like we think of. No, they're there. like oaken solid doors. Um, they, but they have a little window, you said? A little window, that's correct, yeah. Yeah. Um, with, uh, you know, iron iron bars, basically. Um, right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I just noticed your, uh, you changed your name on Owlbear there, uh, Matt, to, to Lefty. Well, you know, you've got to uh, roll, with the, <laughs> roll with the punches, you know. Awesome. Times so I'm glad you're embracing your new uh, your style. <laughs> Am I tall enough to be able to see out the window? <laughs> that's a good question uh i don't think so actually that's uh oh man right i mean what, what the guy's like four foot tall right yeah, I mean, yeah. insult yeah. to injury yeah. so is there like a bucket in the room for sure. shit or sure, piss? Yeah, yeah. all right cool i carefully move the probably brimming shit piss bucket <laughs> and i try and what are you, what are you doing up and, and stand on either side so i can look out the look out the out the hallway okay uh, across yeah. the way you see uh yost the beefy but with a piece of possibly shit and piss covered straw in his mouth, just sort of chewing. He looks at you bemused. Ah, oh, so the short man found his way to a view. <laughs> you hear like there's a poking in your back, Gorin. I gotta piss. I gotta piss. I gotta piss. <laughs> I'll be right back, big man. I uh, get down and let him piss. <laughs> oh god. So uh, Mort would like to uh, very politely address Tresty. Uh, yes, introducing you, himself. You from the capital, Arcantos. You've got the look, but quite a, quite an interesting set you got on. Well, that you did have it on before they wrested it from you, I should say. I'm afraid so, my lady. I was once with the Goblin Legions, but no more. I am now a free blade adventurer, hired on with this lot. And I'm afraid it was the worst business decision of my life. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, our, our fates align in that respect. How did you find your way down here? The man? Oh, following the foolishness of dwarves, I'm afraid. They can't help themselves. They find a button, they have to push it. They got a lever, they got to pull it. Well, he vanished, and we thought, well, we don't want him all by himself wherever he's at, so we'd go along with it, and now we're here. Interesting. You say... Push something and he vanished? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Right, was this a euphemism marvelous. for something, or did he actually do this? Aha. No, no. <laughs> it, uh, quite the marvelous thing, these ancients. They, they've they built this a pyramid with stairs on the sides. Not a pyramid, of course, having four planar uh, sides of equal size and dimension. This is a three-sided, uh, an obelisk of sorts, if you will. In any case, we climb to the top, depress the plunger, boom. Like that, we're down here on top of another pyramid with no plunger. How just a hole in the top. I could have sworn before I was taken that I heard that man speaking of exactly the same sort of structure, this pyramid. Oh, which man would that be? Well, it was, he was, it was some of the, one of Garilad's confidants, I'm sure. The man seemed as if he had hailed from Arcantos. Uh, Iso hmm. Isocritus, I believe his name was. A noble, oh, a noble name. Yeah. Well, it was the man, actually, who Garalad, when they wrested my spellbook from me, they took it, and, and Isocritus ended up with it. I have a feeling they probably took it to the library they were talking about. Oh. Somewhere to the yeah, south. Are you, by, by chance, a caster of mysteries and creators of... Indeed I am. I was uh, attached to a small group. Unfortunately, they were all slain. Some of them were eaten by a foul creature named Irsko. Mm. Oh, yes. Yes, we found his bunk. 
I think. Stole his hat, stole his knife, and stole his recipe book along with your spell book. I believe they're both in the room over there. Well, what I've been gathering from uh, the conversation I've been hearing between Yal and uh, his minions is this Irsko fancies in itself a chef of some sort, much as distasteful <laughs> as it is to think about. Cannibalism, oh god. <laughs> uh, well, not cannibalism, my, not cannibalism, my friend. This is an ape. One of those four-armed monstrosities. Mm, oh, don't answer him. He's not in the room. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> He's sorry. unconscious. Oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, uh, what manner of creature is this Ursko? He's one of the four-armed giant baboons. Oh. I was He's, afraid you'd say that. Uh, carried around... Uh, well, I actually overheard. Apparently you found his knife. Uh, yes, to our lasting sorrow, I'm afraid. Um... Well, I, uh, yes. In any well, case, uh, those baboons are not to be trifled with. One of them uh, basically smashed my employer into paste. It's unfortunate. My story is similar. I seem to be the only one left. Uh, I'm afraid it will soon be my time to attempt to answer this madman's questions, but I fear that we are not long for this world, Mort. But I'm glad to have the companionship. But should you wish to know... I myself, it, my group was able to find uh, entrance to this area um, via, there was a cistern, a crack, in the eastern part of the city, um, near the uh, what we were calling the Baboon Tower. We heard Baboon howling coming from that direction, discovered a, a tower, but to the east of it, small cistern with a crack, and we found our way down, navigated through strange claustrophobic tunnels, very, very, very narrow, and then all of a sudden they were on us, and... My friends were gone, and I was taken. My spellbook with it. Hmm. Cistern, and does that... I mean, it won't ring a bell for Mort, and I don't have the map up. No, but uh, you guys do uh, remember very early on that you did hear baboon cries coming from the east at one time, I believe at night. Yeah. yeah, but we haven't really been in the eastern part of the city at all. So... Yeah, beyond, we, we beyond, the, the, beyond the actual well of light, you have not actually moved. Right, okay. Fascinating, fascinating. You're very brave to have gone through a crack in the bottom of a cistern around these parts. Well, I, I wish I, I'd never come here. I had backup. I had uh, doughty men about me, but uh, mm. alas, it didn't help me in the end. But here I am, still alive. Still don't alive. Suppose, don't suppose you have any plans, uh, your your friends I'm out there? In, in yes, your... I have an excellent plan. It's to team up with the first half-elf illusionist that I meet. Fortunately, my plan is so well, far 100% successful. <laughs> Glad to be part of your plan. I like you already, Mort. Well, thank you. I like you as well, but, uh, you know, let's not get too attached because one of us is going to be eaten soon. Probably true. I... Well, I'll go sit here in the corner. Yes, as will I, so that <laughs> Avaricious can have a turn. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, speaking of unfortunate ladies in the, uh, the, the, who are groveling in the corner, Kind of like cradling his arm a little bit close. He calls up them. Uh, Hello, uh, please do not uh, do not be afraid of uh, me. I can uh, I can do no harm to you. I am. Uh... Who are you? Have you said to me to torture me more? No, 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 no. Far from it. I am. My name is Avaricios. Uh, I am a, a prisoner here, just uh, uh, just like you, my dear. No, no, they they caught another one, and you're so. You're so beautiful. And she kind of puts up like a, a hand to your face and kind of, you know, so. I, I get this a lot. It's okay. <laughs> are you, you are a man of the, man of the cloth. Uh, well, yes, I, um, very little cloth at present, I'm afraid, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you must, uh, my dear, I, I'm sorry. There's very little, uh, I can do to, to help your wounds. Um, but I can uh, try to be, uh, offer the uh, the comfort of uh, friendship and companionship, I guess. Here in our here in our final days, it won't be long now. The next time he takes me in, he'll break me. He'll break me. I oh, told yeah. him everything that I won. I told him everything. I told him how I got in here. Um, oh, you poor thing. Uh, uh, tell me what what uh, what is this? What happened? And what what does he want to know? I think is the most important thing. He keeps screaming about his his secret tunnels. I told him that I was in the tunnels, but he claims that it wasn't the tunnels he was talking about. I don't know. My party, my party, my uh, my poor, my poor 
Huntsman is gone. Gone, along with all the rest of them. We found an entrance on the cliff face itself, on the, on the stairs. Surely you must have passed it. Uh, I'm certain that we passed it. We saw it. <laughs> it was a narrow crevice. It, was, it wasn't obvious. It was off, off the main trail. But we saw a dark crevice and we went in. And lo and behold, we thought we had found some sort of secret path, that hidden treasure perhaps. We smelled the feces, of course, but we thought we could handle anything that was cut. We were full of ourselves. We thought we could handle any threat. We were so wrong. We were in narrow tunnels, hounded by boons at every every corner. But it wasn't the baboons that ended the lives of my of my friends. It was those it was those worms, the worms in the sand. They got all of them. They attacked them, took them down, and ate them. I tried to escape, but I was captured and brought here. Oh, that sounds dear. bad. It sounds very terrible. I'm I'm so sorry for your loss. They're, they're not you like the worms from Dune. They were much smaller. I just want to be clarified. <laughs> <laughs> he reaches out to to pat her on the shoulder and then <laughs> change his hands. <laughs> that's messed up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You would be like thoroughly traumatized. Like I mean, you were magically healed, so it's but yeah, you're it's uh, yeah. This is uh, yeah. He's uh, you're all sorts of jacked. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And she she looks at it. She's like, "What happened? What did they do to you?" You know, it is um, a small price to pay. Uh, I, I will, I will be fine. I will make two. You know, I, I've, I've still got one. So you know, it's going. To... You, you still have hope. I like that. I like that a lot. You got it. You can think for yourself. You can find a way out of here. We, we can do it. I know we can. We just got to get the keys. We got to get the keys. That man, that Oakart man, he's been charmed. I know. He's not. He's not one of them. He's not like Isocritus. Isocritus has his own plan, his own plan, but y'all, no, there's, his mind was warped. He looks like one of us. Just look at him. You saw him. He looks like an adventurer. Am I wrong? He was one of us. He's been charmed. I tell you that. And tell him, if I can get my armor, if I can get my red plate back on, then you will see Samantha the Red once more, and I will bring the red out of y'all's head, and then Garland's. Oh, that sounds like a, uh, very, uh, oh, that's... That's oh, solid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the end, isn't it? You can tell me. I know it. I get, what? In, I get I, in moods. I, I, you are going to be fine. We are all going to be fine. We are going to uh, get out of here and you know, we, are, we will have a drink with our gods. It will be fine. Trust if, me. If you say so. I await your, await your grand plan. <laughs> oh, yeah. all right. I, 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 I'm, st I'm still working on this a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's it is new. I'm formulating some thoughts. Okay. Um. So, yeah, that's that's good, right? With with uh, Samantha. Yeah, yeah that's, that's okay. good. Uh, Gorn, do you want to say anything to Guelph? Yeah, I want to ask Guelph. See if I can figure out from Guelph how exactly he got down here. How long has he been down here? Okay. What have they been doing to him? What do they feed him? So. I'm going to cut through, like, I'm not going to role play. like, he's just, he's, like, insane, so it's, it's sort of like you got to cut through, like, a whole bunch of craziness before you can actually suss out, like, beats and pieces, and eventually he spills yeah. out, like, how he actually got down here, and uh, you realize that what Guelph told you is he's the culprit. He's the one with the info that, uh, that Garalad wants, and because you're another dwarf, he's like, he's like, I'll tell you, because you're one of mine. You're, you're with me. You know, I can tell you. You're not going to tell him, are you? Of course you won't. I've given it to myself already. 100% chance you're not going to spill. I know it. And he, <laughs> and he tells he tells you that um, he's like, I, I'm the one. I'm the one that he wants, but he'll never get it from me. Um, he, uh, he found an entrance into uh, winding, loamy, earthen tunnels. And where he found it was interesting. He actually found it um, in side of a ruined gladiatorial school that is uh, to the west of the city. It's actually outside the main city itself to the west. Okay. And, and it was a uh, secret tunnels that led there. And uh, those tunnels end, end up emptying out uh, in the northern part, the northwestern part of this level. Um, he was captured by... Uh, uh, he was actually captured when he had already entered and had been exploring um, uh, in this area himself. And he was, and this is the reason why you think that Guelph actually might have been crazy even before 
he has been substantially tortured is that he explored on his own. He came. Love this guy. He came <laughs> by himself. He found the entrance in the gladiatorial school, explored on his own, made his way through these uh, Garalad's tunnels um, into this level, explored substantially, and then was eventually captured. Interesting. Do you have any idea why Garalith is so upset about people knowing about these tunnels? Well, it's, I, 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 I have no idea. I didn't see anything of interest. It was full of mushrooms and fungi and things like that. Uh, I assume the man has some sort of interest in those in those things. Mm. Might be why he's got the might be why he's got that Archontian with him. Probably he's got him tasked with researching things, although I don't know why an Archontian would team up with him. There must be some sort of exchange, some sort of bargaining going on. Does he care for gems and gold? Uh, riches? I don't think he cares at all, as, uh, unless you can use them to buy materials of maybe I don't know. He doesn't seem to care for these sorts of things. He cares only about his about his creatures, about his creatures it's... and his fungi and his, his things of earth. Doesn't care Does he have any commerce with the city? Does he have any like supply lines or anything like that that he tries to? I don't know. Why would I know these things? I don't know these things. He doesn't care about stone. He doesn't care about stone like you and I care about stone. No. <laughs> That's weird. This is all we need. Who doesn't care about stone? This is all we need, friend. It's right here. It's within arm reach of all sides. It's within an arm reach. Home. Home. We're home. You have any, uh, you want, do you want to get out of here? Would you like to leave? Well, you put it that way. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I would, I would, <laughs> I would love to get out of this hellhole and see the open sky. Again. Would be great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see if it's we can make it's home. Uh, so okay. to be clear, um, you've got, uh, Yoast, okay. Has probably the most interesting way that he can't kind of came in, right? Uh, some place that you could actually, from step to step, actually sort of retrace vaguely the way that your party did, right? He talked to the halflings. He went northeast, crossed the great chasm, found a spiral stair up to this level, confronted guardian statues of which he was managed to, but to bypass because he, he held forth a symbol of Thoth, which he still has in his possession, okay? Um, and then he found a secret entrance to a back passageway that led to through one of the northern entrances of the Hall of Judgment, right? Which you guys saw when you were in there, right? Past the Ruby Throne um, and where he was picked up. Does he know if it was the eastern one or the western one? Uh, it was the eastern one. That's what I okay. figured. And, we and, heard Baboon's lair behind the western one. And Yost, you also remember too that you vaguely, once you came once you came up the spiral stair and were on this level, you kind of traveled vague, excuse me, vaguely westward until you found the secret entrance to the to the passageway that led to the door that led to into the Great Hall of Judgment. You got it, David? I think so. I mean, I wrote it all down. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, the um, Guelph came in from the far to the west of the city in Gladiatorial School, actually was in, apparently, Garalad's actual secret tunnels that he keeps referring to, and found his way into these uh, from the northern area. You can't be any more specific than that. Um, and, uh, 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 Tresti came in through a cistern, went through claustrophobic tunnels of some sort, um, and, uh, found her way, he, uh, then was captured and Samantha found her way in through the cliff face, was attacked by some sort of sandworms of, that killed her party within tunnels as well, and then was captured. Multiple points of entry on this level. Yes. Uh. Now they also, uh, I don't, one of them at random also speaks and bemoans the fate of a man named Burris, um, who you quickly surmise is probably the man that was being tortured when you first entered the Hall of Judgment. Um, he was briefly brought in by Tresco before some sort of disturbance, they assume you, which they assume correctly, brought Tresco somewhere else. Tresco dragged Burris with them out of the hallways. They all assume that Tresco dropped Burris off in the kitchens to be tended to. By Earsco. I have one question, oh, John. Tended to. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Tenderized. Yes, go ahead, David. Any sign of an Aximander? Yeah, the old man. What happened to him? That was actually my next point. Um, so uh, I'm going to, go, going to assume, unless you tell me otherwise, that you do not do it. We're not going to play this minute by minute, right? No. 
you introduce yourselves to these fellow prisoners. You can shout to each other and communicate uh, yep. through the doors. However, the more you do it, the more y'all, the more chance that y'all is going to come out and uh, beat one of you for talking too much, right? Um, uh, but you can generally do it, so I'm not going to be too strict about it. But it's just there can't be any like deep planning between the whole group. Um, but the person that you're with, you can talk to as much as you want. Um, however, assuming that you don't immediately attempt to escape, uh, time is going to pass. Mm. Um, uh, I would say at first, a couple of hours pass. Are you okay with a couple of hours passing before the next major thing happens? Or would you like to, you t- got to tell me if there's anything you'd like to do in those hours. Uh, I'm just yeah. going to start getting prison strong. <laughs> I'm going to be doing push-ups and all kinds of shit. Got to stay fit. Yeah. Yeah, it, it scared you uh, what Guelph looks like, so you're like, uh, got to keep up. Yeah. Uh, so I I have two questions. Um, did we see uh, Anaximander? Did I get his name right? Anaximander, yeah. Um, uh, did we see him? Because I, I remember in the hallway going north where we had the, our first fight, uh, didn't Cisco like, tap something on the floor and throw him in? I don't know if we got a good enough look to know if that looked like an Axamander or if it was just like a generic figure. That oh, no, there. you definitely knew it was an Axamander. Yeah, because remember, so you saw got... him being dragged down the hallway. And then when you rounded right. the corner, that's when he stepped on the um, on the on on some sort of device and something opened and an Axamander was tossed through there bodily. So we don't know if he's still there, but that's where he was. Okay. Right. And uh, the next question I have, are there any kind of... I mean, I can't. you, you mentioned it's very bare in there. Might there be any like uh, like rat bones or uh, like any kind of like l- little shitty animal skeletons? Yeah, probably. I would say so. Or at least a corpse of like a some you know vermin or a rat or so too. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, here's what I would like to do. Um, he's going to uh, look through the the little bones of these little animals. Mm-hmm. And he is going to try to make a little tiny sickle out of it. Like find a bone that's kind of like a, like a, like a rib bone or mm-hmm. like a pelvis or something mm-hmm. that has kind of a shape. And uh, find, you know, the cleanest piece of straw that he has. And just try to like fiddle into something that could be uh, uh, like a little sickle shape. How are you going to whittle um, it? Uh, no, no, no. He's going to, like, look through the skeleton to try to find, like, bone pieces yeah. that could go and then just use that kind of straw to kind of, like, tie it, twist it and tie it together. He's like a rib, to make... rib and a femur. Yeah. Tied together. You make a... Oh, sickle. I see. All right. So here's yeah. the deal. Um, you certainly cannot do that by yourself. Can we guess the reason why? <laughs> uh, I will ask for some help. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dumpy. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, if, uh, yeah, if, if, trusty is not, is it, tr- no, you were with Samantha. I'm sorry. Um, I was Samantha, yeah. yeah, she's, he's like, what, what on earth are you doing this for? Um, well, I, this is, um, you know, a, a symbol of faith for me. It is, um, even made from humble materials. It is something that, uh, reminds me of, uh, the, the pact that I have with my God. And Whatever passes the time, someone. I suppose. Okay. Okay. Don't. Put your hand away. Hold on a second. Just, I, I'll, they, I'll, I'll they, get they it. did that for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, she helps you out. You can, you can make like a, yeah, a little, a little hook thing. Um. So I don't know if that um, uh, can count as a holy symbol, but that is uh, my intention. Like it's not a, like a legit holy symbol with value. But you're, you're, att- you're, you are actually truthfully attaching value to it. Um. Like your, you know, like your own Lysion, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, the uh, the sickle is uh, one of his uh, one of his holy symbols. Yeah, I would say if you invest, like if you, uh, it wouldn't. I'm not going to be strict and say like you have to cast a bless spell on it. Like if you truly believe, you know, in this dark hour that you know this would actually be a holy symbol, then I then I buy it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah I think I think that he would be looking for faith and hope and whatever he can. Yep. Total. Yep. You got it. You can get. You can. You can have a very makeshift rat bone holy symbol. Um, um, Matt or Mike, I'm sorry. Is the lock accessible from this side, or can you reach the lock from through the window? No, you can't reach it. Yeah, they're not. So there's no no point Brad fashioning like a like a lock pick out of like animal bones and trying to pick the lock. 
no, you, uh, first of all, you're small. If, um, uh, a normal human person, or if you could get up to that height, like if you had like some sort of extender or something like that, you know, I don't know what you would do. I'm not going to give you ideas, but, but that's fine. Like if you, if you were able to reach an arm out, you still would not be able to reach like the, the lock mechanism. I'm going to take my time studying the door then and seeing if there's some way to sabotage the door. So either it doesn't close or see if it can be lifted off its hinges or anything. Like that. I got nothing else to do except get prison strong. So. <laughs> no, I got you. Yeah. Um, okay. it, it looks like they, you know, it's, it's been constructed very well. Like they've anticipated most, most things. I mean, you could obviously, if you were planning to fight, you could jam a foot in that door, um, before the jailer leaves or something like that. Um, uh, but the hinges are not on your side, you know, you know, it's, it's fucking rough. You know, there's right. no, no, no seam on the ground, nothing like that. Uh, Ted. Yes. So what Mort would like to do is start looking around and see if he can find a chip of stone or, or anything that's even vaguely sharp and see if he can start essentially, you know, filing away at the wood just on the other side of the lock. Mm -hmm. Right. To try and thin it out to be able to get in there at some point and, you know, finally go all the way through and then lift the lock. I mean, I know it's going to take more than a couple hours yeah. to get through a stout door, but filing at the, the door is the only idea I have right now. Yeah, you could probably find something to begin that, but it, like it's so, you know, it's like a chip, right? You know what I mean? So it would take... You know, it's it's like Shawshank sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like just. Oh you know, yeah. Well, I've got I got day. my poster to hang up over it. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Cool. Uh, and then you know when if I if I actually make a cavity, I think probably you know we can mix some some dung and and dust and dirt and kind of rub it into the hole and mm -hmm. uh, it won't be an obvious hole. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. You can you can start that. So uh, okay, a couple hours go by. You okay with it, yep. David? Do you want to do it? Yep. No. Okay. Nope. All right. So they um uh after a couple of hours uh you hear the main door to the cell complex open again, um and uh a body is thrown through it by an ape. You can you don't you can't tell who, but you just hear like a whoa, um uh Nyal, you hear exit with a jingling of of keys comes out of his chamber as well, and he's like, well, what do we have here? Well, there's just people floating all around these chambers. You shouldn't be bothering Garalad like that. He's a nice... Oh, you're... You're pretty damn old. Whoa. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Okay, that's rude. Well, let's see. Where should I put you? Eeny, meeny, miny dice roll. Um, how many... How many things we got here? We got one, two, three, four. Here we go. You're going in... Uh, who's in one? The dwarves. The dwarves. You're going to the dwarf chamber. All right. We have more room. Yeah, door, it's efficient. Door opens. In goes. You can take the upper bunk. And Axamander is. You have two madmen. Yeah. Can I try and, <laughs> and, can I try and catch him? Uh, and Axamander comes in. Yeah, you can catch him. He's like, oh, 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 my friend. So good to see you. You can see that he is. Still looking decrepit and old, but um, he does not look like he has been treated any worse than the god Thoth treated him. <laughs> so it's no oh. worse than that. Uh, but uh, yeah, he says, I have had such a wondrous conversation with a... a, a just reminds me of myself when I was young. It's 150 what years ago. What, what was his name? Isocritus was his name. Mm. Yeah, it's very interesting, man. So many, man, many secrets. But the library he was in, I remember the books were so old. But, but he spoke with them with such reverence. But these were books that were written quite recently. You have you have done nothing to explain to this man like what time he's in or anything like that. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> you know, um, you can see that he seems to be much more uh, lucid now. Right. If it wasn't already obvious, you know, I, um, I'm going to try and explain to him what has been going on and see if I can fill him in on the time frame. Okay. He looks stunned when you sort of spend the time to explain that to him, but he doesn't have any reason to doubt you. And he's, um, uh, he goes, so all, all of Adrianic's men are gone. Even if the caves of blood didn't take them already, 
age would have. And here I am. And he sort of picks up his his long beard. You know, you want to picture this guy looks like is like um, Alan Moore, right? He's like just like that kind right. of guy, like, just big beard, um, but like way more decrepit, like a lot of a lot older. Um, yeah. So he tells you, um, uh, the man is quite a quite a reasonable man. He's here for knowledge. Said he arrived a mere two weeks ago, um, and he was asking specifically to look at the Library of Thoth, which is, I assume, where we were. Um, and I should tell you, I and I've noticed so many of them around. In fact, I believe that one mishandled me not too long ago. Am I correct in that? Yes, yes. Well, he hates them. He hates the baboons. Finds them disgusting creatures. Wants nothing to do with them. Strange. But apparently he has agreed to for some sort of exchange between the ruler of this general area for access to the library. And oh, how I wish I could go back. I hope that this is only temporary. Where are we? Do we get to eat soon? I have no idea. <sighs> well, There's a bucket over there if you need it. Well, Gordon, Mr. Black Hood, should you, should you be at all be interested in things of philosophy and history and magic and arcane arts as I'm sure you are as all the dwarves are of course mm -hmm. come with me back to the library when they ask again you must be careful there are strange figures there that the quiet black hood has always seemed to be studying and I could have sworn that in the stacks themselves there was small little small little baboon cubs prancing around this I don't know why Isocritus put up with them but they were Everywhere, but I know, I know, I saw the leader. They came in and they talked for a while. But they didn't talk with words. It was all in sign language. They talked with their hands. They wouldn't utter a single sound and told me before I entered that I must not open my mouth at all in the library. And then I dared not, and I did not. Very strange, very quiet, but such reverence there. Where's your friend? The friend, the, the one that was uh, also the, the, interested in the arts. Unfortunately, the uh, baboons captured us and Onweer was injured. And I don't know how he fares. And Father Av Avaricios is in the next cell over. Uh, the poor news. Are we, are we prisoners here then? Uh, we are, unless we can figure out a way out. I'm sorry I let you get captured. We thought you would be safe in that room. It, it is not your fault. I am a, a weak man. I don't, I don't have any of my whole companions with me. And I remember what I used to have. Oops. Let's see what he used to have, actually. That might be, might be kind of useful for you. Might it not? Uh, yeah. Anything would be useful now. Uh, what room did we find that puppy in? Even we found him in the. You think Guelph's bucket will be useful, Mike? Uh, I haven't searched it yet, but I doubt it. <laughs> Maybe that. Uh, we found him in the uh, uh, chair, John. He was in the chair. The big. Uh, I think you got to listen yep. to his number seven down there. I just need. That's to my that. number. Oh. I was just numbering the rooms in order that we encountered them. Uh huh. Okay. So uh, I won't role play it out. He does still have access to the spells that were in his mind at the time he sat in that chair. Okay. Interestingly enough, they happen to be clerical spells. Shape your opinion Whoa. of him. Um, so he can cast the following spells. He can cast detect evil. Uh, these are all ones. Detect evil. Detect magic. Augury. Locate object. Divination. Tongues. True seeing and stone tell so what stone tell he was a badass <laughs> what i can't i don't even know half of these things man he's pretty good what is stone tell uh, i believe that's an ad and d spell you can uh, you, the stone can talk yeah, <laughs> Mike's looking around dude. for his old php i'm looking for my old php <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but can it tell us the way out? And can locate object tell us the way out? Uh, don't know. He, I'm honestly not going to suggest 
uses for those spells. You know what I mean? Like you can. Oh. He'll he'll oh, go you know. he'll go with your suggestions basically. He's like, yes, you know I seem to recall they they still have a bond. They can call forth such power. Um, I'm not in the room, but I can think of a pretty helpful object. Locate okay, thermonuclear device. Seriously, to get us back out. Stone tail, stone tail. Uh, whoa, my goodness, it's a sixth level cleric spell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, causes stone to hear and speak rock and stones in the air of effect will answer any of the cleric's questions about what has transpired in their immediate vicinity or what lies behind them. Well, that's for one turn. We could use it to ask where the secret door to the north is or... Right. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, if we get in the right general vicinity, we could ask about any of the exits. So, uh, I mean, augury lets us see the future too, right? Yeah, it's more of a general thing, but yeah. Is this plan going to be good or bad? Is that the way that one works? I mean, sort of, sort of. How yeah. it is in modern editions. Yeah. So, uh, locate object, uh, sense the direction, but not the distance of an object. You can no. locate either a general class of an object or a specific object. Um, cannot be used to locate creatures. Yeah, I think no, uh, but it can't be used to locate. Probably the best. It can be used to locate the exit, though, right? It can give that you the general space. direction, but, mm. but you can't just say like exit. You know what I mean? It has to be more <laughs> sp more specific than that. Um, I mean, if it, if it could locate the the plunger that was missing at the the pyramid, maybe that could mm. let us go. God only knows where it would send us next, because I bet it's got more than one setting. Uh, no, I'm sure it's fine. Not here is. So Augury, I don't think he would be able to cast. You actually need some sort of focal point uh, to um, interpret omens. So like, so like you would need like they're saying like a set of sticks, um, or tea leaves. Or... Guts or Aren't there a bunch of bones all over the the floor of these? Yeah, break those up. You can see how the bones. Oh, are. Okay, yeah, yeah, I believe that. That's that work. Um, they only gather omens from the pattern of the next three turns and can only indicate whether a future action will result in weal or woe to the party. Um, base chance for correctly interpreting the omens is 70% plus one, an additional 1% 1 per level of the caster. I would obviously roll that in secret. Right. Okay. So, All right. Well, we've got an Aximander back. That's something. We can, we can um, sit on that and think. All right. So after a little while... Um, Nyal is going to he he uh he comes in and he is going to open every door and basically throw in scraps of food at you. What kind of food is it? Is it mushroom based? Uh yeah, there's like yeah, it's like it's not even like a stew. It's like he'll throw in, I don't know, just random shit like awful awful Wait. meat and shit like that. When he does this, does he have a uh you know else with him or is he by himself? He's uh he is he has a couple he has two baboons that are behind him, regular baboons, not not giant ones. Yeah. But his his um, keys are dangling. When when we look at him, um does uh can we tell? Does is he acting enchanted? Does he look like he's been charmed in a way? John's been John's been telegraphing the whole time, being like he looks at What's yep. his name? Ga Gallo saying like he looks at him like adoringly. He said that like a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, he's, I would. He's, yeah. Sure. But uh, with this kind of thing, you can't really tell unless he's in front of the person that he's been right. charmed by. You know. Um, okay. So, but uh, just you know, you should keep in mind how that spell actually works, right? You just you're inclined to, to view that person favorably and will act to defend them, right? But everything else is the same, right? Yeah. Right. Hey, John Yost, uh, the beefy boy. Uh, was his having a holy symbol of Thoth because he's a cleric as well, or no? He's not a cleric. He was he was like a straight up fighter. Yeah, yeah. He just happened to have it. All right. Yeah. It got him it, past it, those guardians. He found it on one of his other adventures in the city. So yeah, I know. It makes yeah, sense. I mean, it makes sense. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. If there's um, um, loose stones in uh, cell four, there might be loose stones in other cells as well. Be worth looking around. around. Maybe I can I mean, ask I'm, Trappy to search the walls while I'm scraping for scraping wood. Um, what are you looking for, Ted? I'm sorry. 
Well, if we're communicating back and forth a little bit, and Yost, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's told us there's a secret hidey hole in his cell, but if, if there's one in one cell, there could be in others that might have something in them. Yeah, there's nothing. Already. Yeah. Nothing? Yeah, you oh, got okay. the time. Um, I'm sort we of have, of the can... mind that we need to wait it out a little longer, guys. I don't think we're well, going to... Go no, I agree with you, but I was going to say, is there an opportunity when uh, What's-His-Bucket opens the door to uh, engage him in conversation? If you want to, yeah. Okay. Hey, friend. Um, you're Whiskin, right? Oh, that I am. Uh, how'd you end What's up it? down here at Art and Fool? Well, you know how it is. You get a hankering for treasure and gold, and you listen to stories told around fireplaces, and Ardenvul always kind of rises to the top. And so off I headed with a bunch of the rest of those uh, foolish, foolish men and women. And, well, as it so happens, they got themselves killed. But thankfully, good old Garlad, he spared me because he's a good man and saw my worth. And he gave me this righteous job being a jailer. And gosh darn it, if I don't just love every moment of it. Couldn't That's wish for fantastic. anything more. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. And as a dwarf, I know this, that when you find your true purpose in life, everything just falls into place. It's Isn't so that true. It's amazing. It's almost as if I was meant to find the man. He has given me a new lease on life. And although I mourn my companions and what those baboons... Yeah, I don't want to think about that actually, but uh, yeah, but that wasn't Garilad's fault. Sometimes they get a little crazy. And... I understand. I understand. So, um, were you guys successful as adventurers when you came down here before you met before they met their ends? We were doing our fair share, doing some trading with some statue brokers up top. A uh, place called uh, what was it called? Broken Head or something? Had a big old statue of Arden ah, up front. I know that Ooh. place. We actually found the arm of Arden. Uh, well, in another part of the uh, holy shit! I bet you find those pieces you put them together, it'd be something pretty cool. Yeah. What do you, you know, raise actually, your Yost? What do you want over there? Shut your trap. Put your arm down, Yost. What do you want? We actually, uh, we actually well, did fairly good. well for. Oh, sorry. No, Go ahead, no, David. Okay. I want you to continue talking. I, I just want to be while this conversation is happening, and he's not facing me and he's distracted. I'm just, I just want to be like very aware of the amount of space between myself and my own little like window yeah i'm assuming it's not reachable what what, what reach what is reachable him like can i can yost's big oh. boy yost re if if i wanted to could i reach through the door window while yeah. he's talking to goran and no be able he, to he's, he's like 10 feet away but yeah he's That's like eight okay. feet away right you know what i mean yeah All right yeah but i mean you know if he takes a step couple steps back and it's mm -hmm. well yeah and also the keys. Uh -huh. I, I don't want to interrupt too much in this conversation, but just because things will keep going. The keys are affixed to his belt behind him, to the side. Uh, right on his right side. On a he has a. And they look like, like a, they're a big like baldric. You know what I mean? And so he's got it attached to a to a um, an actual like pin ring on the side. That's you know. What if Mike threw a bucket of shit at him and he maybe backed up? All right, why not? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. If I could continue my conversation here. No, before... continue, continue. I just wanted to, like, <laughs> gets us all killed again. Yeah. Even unconscious. <laughs> can comatose are trying to kill us. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask him. I'm just going to say, well, we had some success ourselves before we ended up down here quite by accident, you understand. Um, your, 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 your boss, Galdrick, is. Do you think he would be amendable to letting us ransom ourselves to get out of here if we promise never to come back down here? Listen, I, I look, I you seem like nice fellas, but I you're 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 in a world of shit, my friend. Once they get you into that hall of judgment, he ain't gonna stop until you admit to how you got down here. And if if you're if if what you tell him doesn't fit with what he wants to hear, oh boy, here's gonna be well look at old Guelph back the Guelph. Don't stop looking at me that way, Guelph. Get back in your corner. Get back in your corner. Well, you saw what happened to him. Yeah, I saw what happened to him. That's um certainly don't want to repeat that. I mean, we just wandered down here. We were adventuring quite happily up by where those halflings are uh keeping their little uh fruit stand up there. And uh we just yeah, hit a button and here we are. 
Well, it's just bad luck for you, my friends. I wish that uh, Garalad, you know, well, I'm just his favorite. It looks like he can only have one friend, and I happen to be it. You ain't going to convince about, him otherwise. What about this other guy, this Arkantian? Yeah, that he's... Isocritus son bitch. Yeah, he's a he's a sneaky feller. Oh, he's always Why? Hold, hold up in that quiet little library of his. Man, I just wish Garalad spends so much time with him. I don't know why he doesn't spend more time with me. I'm yeah. a much better conversationalist than that Isocritus. Sneaky fucker. Well, funny that you should say that. But my friend here, the old guy, he was just with, uh, what did you say his name was? Iacrapus? Uh, Iacrapus? Isocritus. That, that's Isocritus. the one. Uh, thanks. Thanks, buddy. You're all right. Yeah. Right. And I just kind of gestured, you know, coming a little closer. He said that Isocrates has called over one of the one of the large uh, forearm monkeys and he heard your name and then he started whispering to him and then the monkey left the room. He doesn't know what that's all about. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm just telling you what I heard. Garalad wouldn't, he, he wouldn't do that not, to me. Oh, it's, it's, no, Garalad. not, not Garalad. No, not Garalad. Isocrates. Isocrates was talking to one of the apes about to uh -huh. Garalad about me? No, Isocritus mentioned your name and then started whispering one of the apes, and then the ape went and got a big sharp knife and went into another hallway. That's some bit. I'm gonna have to do something about that. Well you, look. You got me thinking there. I we like need you. allies. We need allies down here. And you knight need some allies down here, and we all have to be responsible for protecting Garalad's interests. So, if Isocritus is the enemy, we should probably do something about it. You know, friend, I'm one to agree with you. But it feels awful to me. It feels like if I go against Isocritus, my, my pal well, Garalad ain't going to like it. And if Garalad doesn't like it, he ain't going to like me. And I can't stand for that. Garalad what says if that Isocritus shouldn't What if touched. Isocritus has him under a spell of some sort? A spell? No. Well, he's a... He's the little booky guy that lives in a library, right? Chances are he's a dirty old spellcaster of some sort. Well, I think Garalad's a little too canny for that. Probably. He, he knows a spellcaster when he sees one. I mean, you know him better than I do. That's I why he kept that. that uh, he kept that one that you brought with you. That's why he's keeping him alive. I'm sure Ice Christ. He's got plans. For him. Send him over to Ice Christ. To get something done. I don't know what he's gonna do, but but you know what? You're right. You're right. Like, I'm gonna look into this. I don't like that Ice Christ fellow. I don't like that attention. Garalad spending on him when he should be up here with me. God damn it. You're right. You're right. I'm gonna You let me know if we can be of any help. Yeah. He's like he looks back, he's like, give give him some extra food. And uh and patch up his buddy. Let's give him a little we'll get him up. All right. Don't you tell don't you tell nobody I did this now. All right. Oh, I'll, tell I'll, him who did what. I didn't hear a thing. All right, all right. I got you. I got you. <laughs> all right. Um so right. the the baboons go hooting off. They come back, um, and uh, they, uh, so it takes, a, uh, so Nyal goes back to his chambers. Baboons go hurrying off. Um, they, they uh, and y'all actually, before he goes back, he gives you some extra food. So you have extra food. Doesn't really mean anything. Um, and Axe is very happy, though, to have it and chows it down. Um, uh, basically, Guelph and Anaximander are now getting to know each other in only the way that two completely insane people can. And so it's this. <laughs> You just like let them do their thing in the back corner. Um, oh, oh my god! In the meantime, um, the baboons return after probably about an hour or so, and they have like a bunch, um, and they're carrying like gently, almost reverently and fearfully, like a small box full of um, ointments and wraps and salves and things like that. Right? Nyal comes and meets them, and you see that Nyal is like he takes it and he is looks almost physically ill like he's pale um and reluctant to take it right as he's constantly like looking over his shoulder all right and um and as he goes to uh yost's cell right um and he opens it up he brings the the baboons in has them uh the, one of the the baboons basically hold down on form another one actually puts one hairy paw directly over on mouth and holds his head down and then Nyal starts to apply this treatment to Anwir. Okay. Then what I'm going to say, uh, because we have to end at the night, this is probably a pretty good point, um, is that 
it will wake Anwir up out of his coma early. Okay, but not, you're going to be basically conscious at one hit point on Weir, um, and that's it, basically, but you're out of your coma, okay? Uh, so, you got Gorn to thank for that, so well done. Um, thank you, Gorn. So, you guys didn't watch enough uh, prison movies, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you got uh, you got an interesting scenario going on here. Uh, Squeegee's dead. Uh, Evrisios has lost a hand. Um, Onweir is barely clinging on to life. The next commander is with you. And you have a jailer who happens to be charmed by Garalad, but doesn't like Isocritus. And you oh. have Isocritus, who uh, hates baboons and is not part of Garalad's, like, gang, right? And then you have Garalad. And it's only a moment of time, as in next session, if you don't do anything, that Garalad is going to bring one or all of you to the Hall of Judgment, where pain, oh. pain will ensue. <laughs> All right, let's have a little salute for Avaricious. <laughs> you, you can't see it, but I'm holding up a finger. Yeah. Oh. And pour, pour, right. pouring out for Squeegee. He was a, he was a great character. So it was a great character. Yeah. Squeegee. Squeegee. T- Ted's zero for two right now. <laughs> two, two fan favorites that Ted has created, and yeah, but that means everyone gets another Died one miserably because yeah, Ted, Ted makes great listen. characters. <laughs> Keep so, them coming, baby. Keep them coming. Uh, Ted does have, as everyone does, has a backup character in the wings. But uh, just to be perfectly transparent with the audience as well, is that Ted has a choice of either taking on his henchman, which is the classic thing to do. So he is more than welcome to play Mort. Um, uh, Mort has to start as a first level goblin, um, uh, b- um, or he can choose to play his backup character. He has not decided that. He will decide that in the meantime uh, for next session, and we'll see who he ends up playing next time. Uh, so that. Well, I, I should point out that Mort currently has fourteen hundred experience points, whereas my other backup character has zilch. True. <laughs> well, okay, there you go. True. Uh, on the other hand, the other backup character has an axe and winner, and it's not in jail. So <laughs> <laughs> big pluses. <laughs> yes. So decision time for Ted. Uh, okay, so that'll do it. Great cool. session, guys. As always, uh, everyone, uh, thank thanks, you. John. Thank you for watching. You've been watching 3D6 down the line. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. You know the deal. And go ahead. We Mike. really enjoy all the comments. We really enjoy all the comments. Yeah, oh, yeah. You? It's 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 been actually it's really fun. really fun to watch. Uh, uh, there was a lot, there was a lot of engagement on the last episode. It's been really fun to discuss yeah. it with folks. So so keep those comments coming. We'd love to read them. Yeah. Um, all right, everybody. So have a great week, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, John. Later.